Here in Massachusetts, it's been legal to bet on sporting events ever since the end of January, but legal online sports betting, which was widely expected to drive the new industry, only launched a month ago. Now, new data is giving us a sense of just how lucrative online sports betting is going to be for operators and for the state. The Massachusetts Gaming Commission says wagers totaling nearly $570 million were placed and settled in March, with all but $20 million of that traffic occurring online. All that betting made DraftKings, FanDuel, and the other companies licensed to operate in Massachusetts about $48 million and then yielded more than $9 million in tax revenue for the state. For the record, back when sports betting was still being debated, supporters predicted the state would make maybe $60 million annually. But if that March traffic keeps up, and that's a big F, it could be a lot more. So is online sports betting's fast start good news? If you're a sportsbook operator, absolutely. But there are also concerns about gambling addiction and the way the new industry is promoting itself and advertising its products. Voiced, among others, by State Senator John Keenan. He joins me now along with Victor Matheson, a professor at Holy Cross and an expert on sports economics and gambling. Thank you both for being here. Uh, Victor Matheson, let me start with you. There are a lot of caveats attached to those March numbers. There's the novelty factor. This became legal for the first time. March Madness was going on. There were um, a massive amount of ads. You couldn't escape the online sports betting ads, whether or not you were looking for them. And in addition, there were bonus bets included in those totals, which is, as some of our viewers will know, okay, if I put down $5, I'm given, say, $100 in free wagers to make, which may have inflated the numbers. With all that being said, when you saw those tallies for the first month of legal, sports betting, uh, legal online sports betting, what did you make of them? Well, first of all, you're exactly right. So the, the big months for betting uh, is late in the year plus January. That's NFL plus Super Bowl. Uh, and March is our other big time. Uh, strangely, people don't bet that much on Major League Baseball. Uh, so it's a little bit of a, uh, a weak markets in general uh, nationwide during those times. Uh, but overall, I, I don't think anyone would be surprised by these numbers. Uh, again, I, I would say that we're going to we're going to look at about five billion dollars a year going forward. Uh, that is a surprisingly large amount, I think, to a lot of viewers, because that works out to about a thousand dollars of wagers made per adult in Massachusetts. And again, uh, numbers of about fifty million dollars in revenue, uh, which I think might be surprisingly small to the typical viewer. Uh, so, for of every dollar wagered. Uh, Massachusetts only in the end is going to end up with about a penny or two in actual tax revenue huh. out of every dollar wage. Okay, that's that's useful context, especially about betting habits, because when I saw these numbers, those of us in the media are sometimes guilty of, of jumping the gun and overreacting to things. And it sounds like I may have overreacted to the March numbers. Senator Keenan, what was your take on them? Uh, they were as I kind of expected they would be. I thought, honestly, they'd be a little bit higher given the amount of advertising that was done. You, you could not escape the advertising. Yeah. It was, it's on barrels in downtown Boston. <laughs> it's on billboards. It's on your phone. Everywhere you go, You're right. The it's advertising. everywhere online and also everywhere physically. Yes, you can't escape it. My ride in today, it, um, I was thinking how many times before we started uh, this interview did I see sports betting advertising, and yeah. it, was, it was continuous. So it's everywhere, so I suspect that they'll keep that pressure on in order to keep those numbers up. That gets us to the legislation that you filed back in January that would limit the way the industry promotes itself and tries to pull in new customers. And we should stress that's a large part of what's going on here is they've got, they've, they've got a huge base of potential customers and they're trying to get people in. Why did you file the legislation that you did and what would it do exactly? Um, so I filed it because we've seen this before. We've seen what industries that market products that are addictive um, do in order to draw people to those products. We've seen it in the tobacco industry over the years. We saw it most recently in the vaping industry and how they were, through social media in particular, targeting people with their advertising, particularly young people. And so it's no surprise that it's happening here. And so in an effort to try to get out in front of it, um, which we tried to do during the process of legalizing it, uh, but were unsuccessful, we filed this legislation to at least tamp down some of the more egregious efforts and that has to do with that you can bet and not win. Uh, no sweat bets, gimme bets, uh, bonus, um, uh, odds booster bets, things that make people think they can't lose. Just so I'm clear on this, so would that be um, you bet $5 and, and we guarantee that we're going to give you 
however much, 20 bucks, 50 bucks. Like, we promise you we'll just give you the money. Uh, it's the idea that you can bet and not necessarily lose because you're going to get credits in excess of what you betted. It. And that um, it's no sweat. It's no risk. Um, odds booster. So it further... yeah, what's an odds booster? That, and there's this whole lingo here. Victor, I guess it's familiar to you. You also, Senator, but what is an odds booster? If you bet, you might get a boost in the odds, more favorable odds uh, for, for the better. I see. Um, and so there's that. And then when you look at some of the advertising, there's some regulations in place that are not as stringent as what are in place for alcohol, which we know is addictive, for cannabis. And even if you're you know, not sure where you stand on the debate about whether cannabis is addictive, let's say it's not. Um, their regulations on advertising are stricter than sports betting, which we know is highly addictive. And so we just didn't do what we were supposed to do, and this legislation would make it an unfair or deceptive act or practice by law to use certain terminology that's designed to make bettors believe that the, the risks are not as great as what they actually are. Okay. Um, Victor Matheson, uh, the senator has his legislation pending. Andrea Campbell, the attorney general of Massachusetts, has already pressured successfully the Mass Gaming Commission to tighten up some regulations on the new industry. She got the MDC to essentially say, you know, we're going to keep them from marketing to people who are minors and also make sure that consumers have plenty of prominent opt-outs if they want to be released from the nonstop barrage of marketing that we've been talking about. To your mind, as someone who tracks this industry, are these details that should have been hammered out before the industry launched, or is it the sort of stuff that inevitably ends up getting worked out after the fact as people see how the industry operates? Yeah, I, I don't think I'm wildly critical about the fact that it wasn't put in place in the first place, uh, but it's crucially uh, important, and I'm, I'm so happy that Senator Keenan is, is following up on this. It's crucially important to understand that you cannot count on the industry itself to regulate itself because uh, it's it's for them, it's not about getting a lot of people to gamble. It's about getting people to gamble a lot. Uh, and they're going to be generating 90% of their revenues from 10% of their customers, which means, and those are exactly the sort of people you're like, wow, this person is gambling way too much, is what a normal person would say. Uh, but what, a, uh, what, of course, a, an online betting site would say is, ah, this is a premium customer. And so uh, we cannot count on, on folks to regulate themselves out of exactly the sort of high gaming customer that is what makes them all their money. So uh, it, it's very encouraging. Uh, to see that the legislature is at least considering uh, how you make sure that you don't have people uh, uh, becoming addicted here and and engaging in massive amounts of gambling. Because remember, when I said $1,000 per person per year, uh, that includes a ton of people who aren't going to touch uh, gaming at all, uh, which means that there's uh, there are tons of people who are, we're talking $1,000 a month. We're talking about hundreds of dollars a week in, in bets uh, and I think by almost any definition, that's, gonna, that's going to uh, meet the definition of a problem gamble. Senator, I'm curious about your take on the question that I asked Victor Matheson. You said a moment ago that you had tried to get out ahead of some of this stuff when the legislation was working its way through the House and Senate, and it didn't happen. Do you, in hindsight, and I know hindsight's easy, but do you wish that these details have been hammered out before the law legalizing sports betting was passed? I do, because uh, with each day more and more people are using the products. I think it was in the first three days, 400,000 new accounts were set up. And Victor may know better, but you know, the rate of addiction uh, is about, say, let's call it 1% even. That's 4,000 people who are going to struggle with addiction related to gambling. That's 4,000 families that are going to be impacted, 4,000 neighborhoods that are going to be impacted. And from a public health standpoint, those numbers are enormously large when you consider all the uh, issues that we're confronting in, relative to behavioral health, substance use, and mental health. Um, so adding 4,000 just out of that 400,000 is, is a very big number. I don't want to get too inside baseball here, but to the extent that you're comfortable, did people push to take some of the extra steps that you're now asking the, the legislature to take? Was that, was that pushed for in the process and people didn't want to hear it, or did it not occur to lawmakers that some of these things were going to be problematic? I, I think it's probably a combination of both. Um, we pushed during the Senate floor debate on the bill uh, to include at least the same advertising restrictions that are in place for cannabis. Uh, again, having been involved in tobacco and uh, with opioids, I've seen these insider industry advertising practices, and it's inevitable that they get out of control. 
And so we tried to do that. This is an, another attempt, a different way to do it, and hopefully we'll have success here because um, we're facing a public health crisis uh, related to gambling. There's, there's no doubt in my mind. Uh, Victor Matheson, what do you still want to know that we don't know yet about how the industry is operating in Massachusetts? We have the first month's wagering totals. We have a sense of how much the sports books are keeping. Um, you just highlighted a bunch of basic trends involving the industry that people need to keep in mind moving forward, including the fact that most of the revenue generated comes from a small amount of participants. What else do you want to know about the situation in Massachusetts that we haven't learned? Uh, I think, again, one of the important things that, uh, that I would like to see is, is not just the total amount of gambling and the total amount of gambling and the, and the number of accounts being made, but what sort of figures are we seeing from those biggest accounts? Because uh, I think that's really where the issue is. Uh, I don't think the senator and I are, are upset at all uh, if you have people making a, a $20 bet uh, several times a year here, uh, and quite honestly, even you know, uh, putting down a few bucks every week on on your favorite sport is not something that would raise any red flags with me, and I, I presume Senator Keenan as well. Uh, where the issues are is where we have again thousands and tens of thousands of dollars of bets being made. That's the place where again we're going to start meeting some of those uh, again definitions of problem gaming, and and that's the real concern. So again, I'm not concerned necessarily about 400,000 accounts. Yeah. I am concerned about 400,000 accounts if, uh, like the senator says, 4,000 of them are showing you know tens of thousands of dollars in bets just in that first month. That's a that's a wild red flag. When it comes to problem gambling, are there particular groups that are at risk? when it comes to uh, becoming addicted or, you know, getting out of control with this stuff, subgroups that we should be keeping an eye on moving forward, do you think? Uh, yeah, so I can certainly answer that. Uh, the uh, one thing that we thought is maybe they'd be similar to what we see for other types of gambling, casino gambling, horse racing, and, and lotteries, and they're totally different. Uh, we see a much higher proportion of men gambling uh, than in other types of things, uh, disproportionately male, disproportionately young, disproportionately uh, highly educated. Uh, one of the insidious things uh, about sports gambling is you have this illusion of control. Most people think when they're scratching off tickets, uh, you know, lottery tickets, they know deep down that, you know, you can't beat the lottery and, and this is, is this is purely purely luck. But uh, sports gambling gives you the illusion of control, gives you the idea that, oh, if I was only just a little smarter and a little better, I could beat them. Uh, but what we know, you can't. And when we're when we're estimating uh, annual revenues for the gaming companies of three to five hundred million dollars in gaming revenues a year, when this uh, industry is mature, there is one place and one place only that three to five hundred million dollars comes from, and that's out of the pockets of losing betters. Senator Keenan, how much appetite do you think there is in the legislature right now to keep on honing this industry and making sure that it works as well as possible and is as I guess, to prevent it from being as damaging as it might be if left unchecked. Do, do your colleagues want to keep tabs on this, or is there more of a mindset like, okay, this is a done deal, it's out here, there's the Mass Gaming Commission, they'll figure out what needs to be done? I think that's generally how it works with most industries. Once the legislation's passed, the legislation um, then triggers regulations, and there's a bit of a handoff to the agency that's responsible for it, in this case, the gaming uh, commission. So I think there is a little bit of hesitancy about going back and perhaps opening this up. But I think we really have to take a look at it legislatively uh, because it's just spinning out of control. And even with what we did pass and what the regulations are presently, um, I believe that they're being somewhat flaunted by the industry. They're not supposed to be involved in recommending bets, yet they recommend parlays. They recommend um, through a kind of a network of advertising um, whether somebody's going to score so many three points. They're not supposed to be doing that, and yet it is occurring. Wait, that strikes me as, and, and forgive my ignorance here, it shows that I, I guess I need to get, hop on and, and get an app, get an account so I can experience this, but that's a huge thing for them to be doing that they're not supposed to, right? That's my read on it. Um, they are not supposed to um, basically suggest or lead somebody to placing a bet that the, the goal is supposed to be just to, oh, join the industry, um, get involved in mm -hmm. sports betting. And yet you see advertisings um, to basically, um, will Steph, Clay, and KD score three or more three-pointers? Okay. Uh, and those bets will be boosted plus 160 to plus one, 225. Well, all right, we'll have to um, have you back to keep on talking about this. Senator John Keenan, Victor Matheson at Holy Cross. Appreciate the conversation.